Hello and welcome to this uh, exam revision video. It's an exam walkthrough video looking at Hardwick Hall, the uh, historic environment question. And we're going to take a look at uh, questions that might focus around the concept of change. OK, so when you think about key concepts around the 16 mark question for Hardwick Hall, you're going to be looking at causation change. Uh, continuity and consequence uh, and they're really the main concepts to be aware of and really have in your mind in terms of your revision okay so the example question that we're going to look at today would be a change continuity focus i don't think you're going to really get a question just about continuity that is really going to very much focus on change because elizabethan manor houses are like a change from what came before so the main uh, here's the question we're going to look at the main change elizabethan manor houses demonstrated was the greater wealth of their owners how far does a study of hardwick hall support this statement uh, and that's a 16 mark question so let's just delve into this question in a little bit more detail now okay so when you're doing this question um, you need to make sure that you're including relevant knowledge well selected evidence key facts avoid just describing details that you can remember about um, hardwick hall you need to include that key knowledge of the site as evidence to put forward a point of view you need to analyze the importance of the factors and explain it really well and then perhaps at the end link the factors together and compare their importance within the essay and then you're going to be judging what is the most important factor and it's very important that you do judge which is the most important factor so try and think about your planning in terms of like a triangle they actually give you the first factor to look at so that is the greater wealth of the owners and um, so you're going to write about that as your first paragraph second paragraph you need a disagree paragraph so i would suggest you could maybe look at the fashions of the time and that's a big change um, a third paragraph might be around the social aspirations of the Elizabethan gentry and how best exemplifies that. And then your final paragraph is going to be your conclusion. So let's delve into this essay and look at maybe like a little plan, what kind of things you might want to write about for this uh, response. OK, so when you think about wealth, um, you know, the, the change of Elizabethan manor houses, you know, it's thinking about, OK, so one of the big changes that you bring about through these manor houses is that um, the gentry are showing off their wealth. So you can talk about Hardwick Hall, more glass than wall, um, the idea of the French furniture, the sort of six French stools that she has that shows off her wealth, the Turkish carpets, the Gideon tapestries. That's a really, really good one. She buys that from the estate of Sir Christopher Hatton. But then the fashions of the time, we could talk about Robert Smithson as a Renaissance architect, the range of different designers and all the kind of key features of the house that really fit in with the Renaissance. So the log ear, the light flooding the building, the symmetry, the purpose of the gardens and the grounds, very, very different from medieval grounds, which are more about hunting. And then, of course, the social aspirations and you know, the ES initials, the Arbella Stewart, the rooms in honour of the Queen as well. So that's some of the different changes we might look at. So you'll actually find with these essays, they're actually going to be using similar kind of knowledge to what you might be in a, say, a causation question or a consequence question. But it's just making sure that you get that language around change within your answer. So you're using the word change and you're thinking about how things go from one uh, to another. So that's the kind of key thing is making sure you really shape your response to the question that's being asked um, of you in the exam. So. Uh, Let's have a look at this question. I'm going to have a look at an agree paragraph. So the main change Elizabethan manor houses demonstrated was the greater wealth of their owners. How far does the study of Hardwick Hall support this statement? So we might start off and we might say something like, I would agree that one of the main changes that Elizabethan manor houses demonstrated was the greater wealth of their owners. For example, at Hardwick Hall, Bess of Hardwick built the house to deliberately show off her wealth. One way she did this was to use lots of glass within the building so much so that people coined a rhyme that said Hardwick Hall more glass than wall. Glass was an expensive item in Elizabethan times, so putting lots of glass in a building was a statement of wealth. Unlike medieval homes, which were often built for defence and as fortified buildings, a great change was building the home to show off wealth. Bess also did this at Hardwick Hall by filling her home with extravagant items like French furniture, such as the collection of French stools and Turkish carpets. Bess also put expensive tapestries on the wall. She bought the Gideon tapestries from the estate of Christopher Hatton for £325, which is £100,000 in today's money. The fact that they were in the state rooms on the top floor shows that this was one of the key purposes of the house. It was all about showing off wealth. This represents a key change from how houses were designed in medieval times. So we've got a clear change there, but some lovely knowledge there really to back up our statements and our points of view. So that's an agree. 
now we can start to look at a disagree factor. So we're going to look at the fashions of the time and we're going to say, well, actually, no, one of the main changes was that actually now houses are more influenced by new fashions like the Renaissance from Europe rather than being in, influenced by the more sort of mili military designs of these sort of medieval houses. So let's have a look at this paragraph. However, in some ways, I would disagree. Another key reason was the influence of new fashions brought about as a result of the Renaissance. The design of the house from Robert Smithson was heavily influenced by Renaissance architectural trends that were popular in Europe at the time and represented a big change from medieval times. There was an emphasis on symmetry, classical proportions and light filled rooms. This can be seen in the symmetrical design of the building, including the chimneys on top of the house. In addition, the inclusion of a loggia allowed light to flood into the ground floor, whilst the huge number of windows allowed lots of natural light into the house. Whilst in medieval times the Great Hall was the central part of the home, now the Great Hall was on the ground floor, whereas the High Great Chamber and Long Gallery were the most important rooms in the home. The fact that the Long Gallery would contain tapestries and portraits reflects the Renaissance style and reinforced Bessie's cultural knowledge. Similarly, the extensive symmetric and elaborate gardens also reflected Renaissance style, whereas medieval grounds were mainly set for hunting. Therefore, a key change Hardwick Hall demonstrates is the influence of the Renaissance on Elizabethan manor houses. So a really, really good focus there on the Renaissance and really picking out those key Renaissance features. And there's lots of different things you can think about there. Um, but really that that change, you know, the idea that there's a real change, isn't there, in, in the Great Hall in uh, Elizabethan houses, whereas like in a medieval house, the Great Hall is is sort of like a, a more important room, whereas in the Elizabethan manor house of Hardwick Hall, the Great Hall is that kind of entrance area um, where all the sort of service rooms are linked off it, for example. But the most important room is like that high great chamber on the top floor where they would entertain, uh, you know, the most important guests. OK, so let's have a look at another disagree paragraph. This is about the social aspirations of the owner. So about the fact that houses are really being built in Elizabethan times to really focus on those social aspirations. And maybe those, you know, social aspirations of people like Bess who are climbing up the social ladder, up the great chain of being. You don't really see that as much with the purpose of medieval uh, homes for sure. So let's have a look at this paragraph. In addition, another key change that Hardwick Hall reflects is the changing social aspirations of Elizabethan society. Building a manor house was not just about showing off wealth, but also about demonstrating social aspirations in society. Whereas a medieval home might have been to show off military might and power, the Elizabethan manor house could show somebody's upward mobility up the great chain of being. Now, just notice there in that paragraph that on a change question, go, really talking about how something goes from being one thing to another, that's really good for change. So being aware of like a little bit in your revision about what medieval homes were like, what their purpose was, that's a really good thing to revise. Anyway, we carry on, so we're on line five. Bess was born into the lower gentry and a building of Hardwick Hall reflected her increasing power. Evidence to support this would be the inclusion of her initials ES prominently displayed on the building facade. This shows that she wanted to show off her power and create a lasting legacy, showcasing her achievements and independence as a woman. The house also served as a statement of loyalty to the Queen, with the Queen's coat of arms above the fireplace in the High Great Chamber. The grandeur of the home may have been linked too to Arbella Stewart, Bess's granddaughter, who in 1597 still had a realistic claim to the throne behind King James VI of Scotland. Therefore, another important change Hardwick Hall represents is people building manor houses to show the changing social aspirations of powerful people like Bess. OK, so we'll take a look at the conclusion. Now, I'm going to start off with a phrase like in conclusion or in the final analysis, embrace the complexity of the question and then be really clear on your overall opinion. So, and you wanna make sure that you make it clear whether you've agreed or, or disagreed. So I, I'm gonna just read this conclusion to you. In the final analysis, I disagree because I believe the main change Elizabethan Manor House has demonstrated was the new Renaissance fashions. Admittedly, showing off the greater wealth of their owners and projecting social aspirations were important changes. However, it was the new Renaissance fashions that really influenced Elizabethan Manor Houses and made them so different from medieval homes. The fact that Hardwick Hall represents so many of these Renaissance fashions, such as the loggia, the gardens, the rooms flooded with light and the glass, suggest the Renaissance fashions are the defining features of the house. Therefore, it's apparent the main change Elizabethan Manor Houses demonstrated was, in fact, the influence of Renaissance fashions. OK, so thanks very much for listening to that revision video and good luck with the exams. Bye bye.